from Triple AFX, this is Christopher Lewis taking a look at the week ahead, March 25th. First thing I'll do in the video, as usual, is take a look at any particularly interesting uh, potential market moving events. And as you can see, Monday is very quiet. Uh, Bostic speaks out of the Atlanta Fed. He does have a habit of trying to get into the headlines. I think he's trying to become the next Fed chairman. Um, but really, at the end of the day, I think the market has kind of sorted that out. And they realize that when he does say these things, it doesn't mean anything. So I would expect muted reaction to that. New home sales can move some stocks, but that's not really what we're focusing on these days. Tuesday, we get consumer board, consumer confidence numbers coming out of America. That can have an influence on the um, U.S. stock indices, so definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, could be a mover. We'll have to wait and see. It generally, though, as a, as, as a general rule, if it's close to what it's supposed to be, it's a non-event. So, for example, it's expected to be 107.2. If it ends up being, say, 120, that would send markets wild, probably in a very bullish tone. CPI, year over year, coming out of Oz, the Australian number, very localized to the Australian dollar and, of course, the ASX 200. Waller speaks out of the FOMC on Wednesday. We'll see. Probably non-event. Thursday, we do get a significant amount of noisy announcements coming out of North America. The Canadian GDP, of course, will affect the Canadian dollar and the TSX in Toronto. Uh, final GDP out of the U.S., of course, is a big deal. Unemployment claims, it is a secondary indicator these days, just getting an idea, you know, how sticky is inflation? The more people that are employed and the less people looking for unemployment insurance, uh, the more inflation there is. But it's just one number in the whole, pl uh, you know, menagerie of numbers that you'll be paying attention to. So I wouldn't put too much weight on that as well. Home sales pending, eh. Revised UOM, University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment, probably a non-event as well. This is a number worth paying attention to on Friday, though. We get the core PCE price index. And the reason it's worth paying attention to is because the Fed really likes this as an inflation gauge. Powell speaks during the day as well. Typically, that could be a market mover. But really, at this point, I think he said everything that he has to say as uh, he basically will reiterate that uh, market participants will uh, see a couple of interest rate hikes later in the year, or cuts later in the year, excuse me. Um, so I wouldn't expect him to rock the boat. Uh, Switzerland, uh, Germany, and the UK close for Good Friday. We do have a time shift on Saturday in the EU. And we also get manufacturer and PMI numbers coming out of China. Obviously, the markets will be closed, but that's something to pay attention to as well as far as a risk-on, risk-off type of scenario. With that, let's take a look at the charts. So you can see the NASDAQ 100 had a very bullish week. And I think at this point in time, you continue to see more of the same action. It's just simply a buy on the dip market. I have the 17,775 level marked as support, and it has been fairly reliable for the last month or so. Really, at this point in time, there's nothing to move the market other than momentum and expectations out of the Fed. And it looks like the Fed is going to do what it can to protect Wall Street. Remember, the Federal Reserve works for Wall Street and not the main economy, so that's why you have to take some economic numbers with a grain of salt. Uh, the euro fell on Friday looking pretty ugly, but uh, let me go ahead and change over to the week here. And you can see just how ugly it really was. Uh, that being said, I think this is a market that will continue to show a lot of back and forth. Uh, really no real reason to think that we're going to break out of 1.07 on the bottom and 1.10 on the top. The S&P 500 looks very strong as well. You would expect it. It's a stock market. It's the United States. The Federal Reserve is going to prop it up. They've already said that even though prices are rising, um, they're going to start cutting rates to stoke economic 
pressure to the upside on the market. That's only going to bring inflation to those of us in the real world. And that's why stock markets will continue to go higher. So over here, we have the gold market. It initially took off to the upside during the week, especially after that Jerome Powell press conference. But it's given a lot of that back. And what this tells me is that we are very likely to see a bit of a pullback. That pullback will be bought into. It's certainly not something people are going to be looking to short anytime soon. So with that being the case, I think you have to look at this through the prism of a market that you're looking to buy dips and take advantage of value. This market has been on fire recently, and it does make sense that the $2,075 level continues to be important as it was market memory uh, base. Bitcoin has had a rough week. You can see that the weekly candlestick has fallen pretty hard. However, I wouldn't read too much into it other than uh, we have a scenario where Bitcoin may have gotten a little bit out of control. And therefore, I think this makes sense. This is going to be healthy for Bitcoin. Um, 60,000 looks like it's going to continue to be a floor in the market. If we do break down below there, Next, I'll start looking at 52,000, which would be pretty interesting if we got down there. The Australian dollar Friday was rough. You can see the weekly candlestick shows just how anemic that rally really was after the Fed. So I'm not sure what this says other than we're probably stuck in a range for a while between 0.64 and 0.6650. The U.S. dollar continues to rise against the Japanese yen. It did give back a little bit of the gains on Friday, but really there's nothing to see here other than this is a market that's going to continue to go higher. With that being the case, I like the idea of taking advantage of short-term dips. I think that the 152 yen level continues to be somewhat important, but ultimately I do think we break out above there. And if and when we do... 155 yen is a very real possibility at that point in time then it becomes more or less a buy and hold kind of um, FOMO trade crude oil this is WTI it initially took off to the upside during the course of the week but gave back those gains to show signs of weakness the $80 level though I think continues to be massive and its importance as there's a lot of market memory there. I think you have to look at this through the prism of perhaps trying to take advantage of these dips that look like they're coming because longer term, this is a market that still is likely to follow the same cyclical patterns that it has for years. The same thing over here in the UK oil, it looks very strong in general this week, notwithstanding. But when you look at the daily chart, for example, you can see the daily candlestick. It does show some hesitation there. So I wouldn't read too much into that shooting star. This is silver. Silver failed right about the $26 level like you would expect. That is an area that's been like a brick wall going all the way back to at least mid-2021. And it, before then, it was important as well. So it's not a huge surprise to see that we stalled there. $24.50 seems to be an area that a lot of people are willing to step in and, and support it. So we'll see if that holds. Underneath there, we have $23.50 as a potential uh, support level as well. The DAX is absolutely on fire. German stocks continue to outperform. This is all based on the idea of the uh, ECB coming to save everybody, uh, just like they're going to do here in America with liquidity. Short-term pullbacks should continue to be buying opportunities. At this point, it looks like we're heading to 18,500 euro. British pound spiked against the uh, Swiss franc. And what I find interesting is that this reaction after the Swiss did a surprise cut, that in and of itself wasn't a surprise. What I found surprising is this has held. Now, I do think longer term, we do see this market take that out, but we've got some work to do before we can actually consider uh, getting aggressive. Uh, looking at the daily chart, you can see massive spike, and now we're just kind of hanging out. Uh, we have some work to do. 
British uh, pound is weakening against the euro here. You can see the euro did spike a bit, um, but take a look at this Friday candlestick. We may not be going anywhere for a minute. That being said, I do like the idea of uh, perhaps uh, buying this on dips just because there's so much support at the 0 0.85 level. The British pound against the Japanese yen spiked massively during the week, only to give all of that back. You can see we're right in an area where buyers could return, so it does make a certain amount of sense that we see this market bounce, but we'll have to wait and see. Ethereum looks a lot like Bitcoin. Ethereum will continue to look a lot like Bitcoin. Quite frankly, there's no reason to think that anything is going to change. Dollar against Canadian dollar is slamming into a major resistance barrier. We'll have to see, but if we can clear this by about another 50 pips or so, this might be a sleeper trade dollar long against the Canadian dollar. The Swiss franc, this is the daily chart. I brought that up for a reason. You take a look at the weekly. It looks like the rest of the yen related pairs, but check this out. The Swiss franc looks like it's trying to fight its way higher against the Japanese yen. So we'll see. That might show you, that might give you the heads up that shorting the yen is still the trade. So pay attention to this chart. It's very important in the sense of what do you want to get rid of? I think both of them ultimately are a short, but this shows you that uh, perhaps the yen is even worse off than the franc. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here at AAAFX as we do these weekly roundups and of course daily analysis.